Welcome again friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the introductory video about, about sulfonamides, which are a part of metabolite production inhibitor inside the cell. So, uh, we'll be talking about the class sulfonamides. Sulfonamides. Okay. And they are functioning uh, like the metabolic, so let me write metabolite inhibition. So, metabolite inhibition inhibitor okay so they act as metabolite inhibition okay so now example for that uh, for this kind of antibiotics are sulfadiazine and sulfamethazole so let me talk sulfa diazine sulfadiazine or sulfadiazine and sulfamethazole sulfametho Sulfamethazole. Okay. And also we are having sulfamethazole. So let me talk this. Sulfamethazole. Sulfamethazole. So these are the different examples. You know, sulfamethazole, sulfamethazole. Uh, so not zole A. It should be Z-O-L-E. Right? So sulfamethazole and sulfamethazole are uh, the part of the sulfonamides. Now in the sulfonamides, these are the antibiotics and uh, the mo most important property of the uh, sulfonamides antibiotics are that these antibiotics does not affect the human cell. So it does not affect, does not affect, does, sorry, it, it should be double F, so it should put, does not affect, does not affect human cells does not affect human cells okay so they can go against bacteria cells easily but does not affect human cells and the way of the metabolite inhibitor that we are talking about is that they block the conversion of PABA which is a para amino benzoic acid to folic acid so they block the conversion of this PABA to benzoic acid and they block this part uh, so that's the exact uh, property of them uh, but it is does not affect the human cells that's another very important property so you can use them uh, so they won't uh, be toxic to us but they will be toxic to the bacterial cell right but they are again bacteriostatic in nature bacteriostatic in nature that means they will halt and stop the bacterial growth but it won't kill the bacterial cells much in this case okay so they are bacteriostatic and also they are only active against gram positive bacteria they are only active against gram positive bacteria but not other type of bacteria so major gram positive bacteria many gram positive bacteria are there and we can use sulfonamides against those gram positive bacteria now another important fact is that as these are the bacteriostatic antibiotics uh, in most of the cases it is formulated to use them along with other bactericidal antibiotics so usually we use them as combinatory combinatory as combinatory treatment as combinatory treatment with other bactericidal antibiotics right so that's an important point now the therapeutic use for them as I know is uh, majorly they are taken to go against UTIs or urinary tract infection right now UTI uh, urinary tract infection what we can do again in combinatory therapy are combined uh, so usually here they are combined with uh, trimethoprim right so let me talk they are tagged with trimethoprim so tagged with so plus trimethoprim trimethoprim they are attached with trimethoprim and we we use them along with trimethoprim to treat uh, to treat UTI or urinary tract infections, right? Now, in this case, this combination of this uh, sulfonamides drug with trimethoprim, we call them as Bactrim. So let me call, uh, le we call them as Bactrim. So we can use this Bactrim against UTI infections. Okay. Now, in another case, uh, we can uh, combine them with erythromycin. So we can combine them. So plus, sorry, so let us change the color. So we can use them along with uh, along with erythromycin erythromycin so you can use them with erythromycin and this combination of sulfonamides with erythromycin this is also this is also termed as pediazole so let me write pediazole 
So this is termed as pediazole. Now this pediazole can be used to treat otitis media which is a common disorder or it's a kind of central nervous system and brain disorder of uh, infants. So it is used to treat otitis media in children or in infants. Okay. So these are the major applications as we can see the combinatory effect or combinatory therapy of sulfonamides along with trimethoprim and erythromycin. Okay, except for that, we can use them uh, to treat bronchitis, to treat gonorrhea, to treat different ear infections, and so on. So bronchitis. So let me write it here. We can use them against bronchitis, bronchitis. Uh, we can use them to treat gonorrhea. Okay, and we can use them against ear infections, different ear infections. Okay. These are the different infections. Okay, and uh, side effects. Now let us talk about side effects. Obviously, side effect is always associated. Now the side effect uh, for this kind of sulfonamide treatment is dangerous because they're related with hemolysis or hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic anemia. Now what happens in hemolytic anemia is that RBC cells are getting ruptured, and as a result of that, we, we, the the patient uh, will. Uh, encounter anemia. So hemolytic anemia is a dangerous situation except for that uh, they are uh, related with dermatitis, nausea, diarrhea and toxic nephrosis. So this is also dangerous. Toxic nephrosis. To toxic nephrosis is attached as well as nausea is associated with these symptoms. Diarrhea is also associated with these symptoms. Uh, side effect symptoms and also uh, there are headache, dermatitis, so also dermatitis, okay, dermatitis and so on. So these are the different side effects. So side effects are kind of danger. So side effects are kind of bad side effects, okay. Uh, but they, we can use them to treat as a combination therapy. Otherwise, singly use sulfonamides are not that much good. Or not much, not that much uh, desired. Okay, so this, in a sense, the introduction about sulfonamides, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.